definitely won a very big IBJJF tournament. Got his black belt. Competed a, a lot in Brazil, but recently has been doing very, very well at black belt. So it's good to see him this far at the Worlds, and he is definitely a very tough competitor. Great cardio, a lot of movement, um, but he's going up against the Team Lloyd Irvin prodigy over here. Yes, uh, so this kid's good. Uh, Hill Taylor uh, defeated Gianni Grippo in the, in the first round of the Pan Championships earlier this year, and he's extremely talented. He's, he's a big up-and-comer, and I would say he is, he is the definition of a dark horse in this division because he's young and hungry, and he's extremely physically talented. Sometimes, the, usually what that means is you're going to have a guy that's inconsistent. But the thing about consistency, especially whenever you're really talented, is you have highs and lows. And so if he happens to, you know, we catch him on a day where he's running hot, it could be, his, I mean, he, he's a, a serious contender in this, uh, in this featherweight division. So you think he actually has a shot at taking the whole thing, is what you're saying? I, I think so. I think if he has the right day, I've seen, I've seen him a little, a little bit from him, and I think that the physical tools are there, um, and I've seen him put it together in, in instances where he looks downright dominant. But I believe that he is uh, he's young, inexperienced, lacks some of the seasoning of other competitors, and so that often can be the downfall. And so you, he's going to have to put it together in a lot of matches uh, today if he really wants to be the champion. And uh, I, I think we'll see in this match where he's at today. And Blue, representing Blue Terrier Bonsai. Roberto Satoshi. In White, representing Alliance. Michael Lange. We're just waiting for them to kick it off here. If you guys, uh, if we're missing something or something you'd like for us to comment on that we haven't, uh, you can get at us on Instagram at, at TylerBishopBJJ or BJJ Breakdown for John or at, on Twitter at TylerBishop or at BJJ Breakdown and let us know if there's something that we're missing, something we get wrong. We'd be happy to correct it. Uh, so you guys have been helping us out throughout the tournament. If you guys want to go back and watch any of the matches from earlier this week, whether it's Saturday in the early rounds of the Black Belt Division, the Black, and Black Belt Open Class Division, or even some of the Purple Belts and Brown Belts, those are all in the archives at Flow Grappling. So one of the benefits of being a Flow Grappling subscriber is you can go back and watch all of these matches at any given time, including these matches. So tomorrow uh, you'll be able to go back and re-watch many of the world's quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals matches. And uh, John, I usually go back and watch a couple of them uh, and just see what I missed. I love to learn from uh, watching a lot of these matches because you're really seeing the best jujitsu in the world displayed in front of everyone. You know, I said to myself, I'm not going to watch any more jujitsu after today because yesterday was such a long day and <laughs> just filled constantly with jujitsu. But I nearly feel like I missed so many matches that I need to go back and watch the whole thing over again. But with flowgrappling.com, the pro subscription, you have access to all of the archives and you can do exactly that. And oh, here, a very athletic guard pull, just running at his opponent, jumping. And Shane's gonna get that one. Yep, and starting the close guard. Something we've seen a lot of this week, we commented on it yesterday, but close guard making a comeback here at this year's World. It started to make its comeback uh, last I, I year. I think it was actually even more prevalent last year, but it's, you know, it's definitely uh, of no shortage here this year. Maybe see some Williams guard here in a minute. He's on the wrong side of the head to be considered real Williams guard, but you can see yeah. that's what he's trying to do to control the posture. It can start that way, and then you can kind of uh, rotate the elbow yeah. around, get the forearm in front of the head, but decides to let it go completely. Going to work this two-on-one grip, maybe trying for the ever-popular sleeve drag from the close guard. Seeing that a bit as well. I don't think that really ever died out after people saw how effective it was with um, Mike Liera at Brown Belt. Yeah. I mean, that was really the first time that I'd seen that whole sequence, and it, especially with uh, as much effectiveness as it had. I mean, I, I feel like he got the sleeve drag on just about every opponent that he had at Brown Belt at the Worlds. Ended up winning the Worlds with it. Very impressive stuff. If there was any question 
as to whether that worked at a high level. I think that uh, that kind of answered that question. It has been answered. Yeah, I agree. Cloy looking to stand here to pass the guard of Hill. Interesting Hill to Taylor. see a lot of people standing. Oh, man. Hill going after that half lumberjack, but that's what I'm talking about with the speed of Kaloy. As soon as he was out of danger, he just made sure that he got his hips away completely as quickly as possible. Still with that lasso. Shane may be looking to rotate out to maybe an omoplata. Unfortunately, I saw Shane on deck a lot, uh, but just the way with all the incredible matches yesterday, I was never never able to commentate on any of his matches. Not super familiar with his game, just heard a lot about him. So I, I don't know if he likes to play this Clark Gracie-style omoplata lasso game. But to your point, he's making those movements like he wants to rotate over into the omoplata. Now taking the lasso out, I think he wanted to make the daily heave. Nope, he's still got it in there. But he's unable to get the foot up by the torso. There he goes. Maybe trying to make worm guard happen here. He's got that foot yeah, over the Yeah, he's going to be reaching leg. for the lapel, I think. Um, yeah. But that's another, I mean, that's another, we were talking about closed guard ton. earlier. I've never seen so much worm guard in my life. Yeah, you know, it kind of came, came into style a couple of years ago, and then I thought maybe it was fading out. Uh, but this year, it was pretty obvious that it was one of the most dominant guards that, uh, that was occurring. Uh, scarily enough, too, you saw it the most, I would say, at uh, Purple Belt. Yeah, Purple Belt. Uh, almost all the champions that we saw at Purple Belt had, had leveraged the, uh, the lapel guard in some capacity. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's some pretty a lot of the guys from high level stuff. Saw a lot of it from the guys from Atos, and they used it very well. And you saw they had a lot of champions at the Purple Belt division. Shane now has got this lasso, and I think he has just a regular spider on the other side. No, he lets it go. Kaloy keeping his feet away, driving in with the shoulders. Might be looking to throw the legs over to the side. He's getting really low. He's about to break this grip, though. Shane overhooks the arm, and he's going to sweep with that. Oh, but Good Kaloy. hips, though, with Kaloy. Kaloy's trying to just walk around past the guard. He's almost past. Tough to do because of that grip, but he, he's doing a good job so far. Oh, man. Great recovery by Shane Taylor. Yeah. That grip really, really stopped or slowed down Kaloy quite a bit. Kloy is still able to push right through it, but... Uh, Kloy given an advantage for the near pass. Made enough space that Shane was able to get the close guard, and now feeding this cross lapel over the back, getting a nice, tight cross grip. Even if you aren't good with finishing the choke, uh, or you're just unable to finish it from here, it's just a great way to break the posture. One-handed, doesn't take a lot of strength. Stops a lot of what your opponent's trying to do in your closed garden. Kaloy got an advantage for that. So up one to nothing on advantage. Now Taylor looking back again at the Williams guard here. Yep, still doesn't. And there he goes. He's got to yeah, rotate he's that get form. get that elbow down between him and the head. Of the, yep. Kaloy is not going to get too much time in the position that he's in because he's really just kind of holding on here, so he'll be assessed and, a penalty. But this is what Kaloy should be doing because uh, his left arm is in jeopardy. Shane really wants to get this, uh, if he's still going for the Williams guard, he wants to get off onto his left hip and face Kaloy. Kaloy wants to lean all of his weight towards that side to protect the arm. So, I mean, he's doing the right thing. He definitely could get a penalty because it's, uh, it is a bit passive, but he, he is defending. Could be argued either way. Interesting, Kaloy now tripoding his base up, putting some, looks like some head pressure into Shane. Shane with the guard open now. 
I think he still has that lapel across the back. Yeah, yeah, he does. And that's a good grip. There's a lot of different things that he could potentially do with it. Cool. With both hands in the armpits here. Again, he he's going to have to watch the, those grips in the armpits and then those that heavy chest down position like this. You will get stalling calls pretty quickly from these positions if you don't try to stand or move around a little bit. And Shane trying to cross collar choke. He's right across the face. That is... Uh, That's fun. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily something you do a whole bunch in the academy in a tournament. It's uh, all fair in love in jiu-jitsu, but it's... Uh, it's not the friendliest technique. Shane now choking up with this left arm, getting it deep in the collar. I think if it gets a little bit deeper, it actually could be a finishable cross-collar choke. But Kaloy circling his head very, very quickly. It's going to unravel the possibility of that choke happening. Nearly gives up an overhook to Shane, which he definitely doesn't want to do. Shane back into the lasso spider guard here. Two Almost back to the Oma Plata. Left and Kaloy nearly one up on the grips and uh, had all of the control for a second there. And if that oh, happens. Oh, triangle. Look to see him run around the guard, but yeah, he's, it, now it, stuck he's got in a triangle. It, deep. it yeah. is so deep. Since Jen see Kaloy can be good about sneaking his head out, but this one is pretty good. He rough. may go to the arm he here in a minute, tap. and he's tapping. Out of nowhere, John, he shot that triangle perfectly. He'd been in that position multiple times, and he was waiting for just the right time to shoot that triangle. And as soon as he did, you saw he dropped his heel down on the shoulder of Kaloy, and that actually meant that that triangle was coming on super fast. And uh, thank God they were still in bounds here because they were nearly at the boundary line, but Hill able to get the tap uh, very quickly against Fabio Kaloy. A big feather in his cap, and he'll move on to face Cobrinha in the semifinals. Man, that was uh, that was unexpected. To your point, he never showed that card that he had the yeah. whole time. He was holding on to it, and that is some patience. Okay. 